I'm having a bad mental health day and I want to do something to cheer myself up so because one of the only things that is giving me joy in life right now is Minecraft, I think I'm gonna paint something Minecraft themed. Alright, I'm awake. I've put some makeup on. I've changed my clothes. Joe's gonna drive me to Walmart so that I can get a square canvas. I already have paint. I'm making it work. Uh, my brain has not been functioning for like the last couple weeks. So this is kind of just me pushing myself to do something with my day. Okay, let's go to Walmart. Okay, we just got back from Walmart. They had literally one 12 by 12 canvas left, which is okay, that is all I need. However, I've also gotten a wooden block that is 12 by 12. I mean, it already looks like a wooden block from Minecraft. Um, I was gonna get painter's tape, but I realized I have washi tape and the only painter's tape that they had was like an inch, which was too big. I needed something smaller. So because I got the wooden block, I also needed some white paint to prime it. And then I also got Mountain Dew Major Melon because I wanted a drink, because drinks make me feel better. Nice. Forcing, forcing positivity. Here we go. So the very first thing that needs to be done is that I need to prime the wooden canvas so that I can put paint on top of it and it'll really show up, which means that I need to cover the entire thing in white paint. I started out using a brush like a professional artist, but then I slowly realized this is just gonna be for me, so it devolved into me using my hands. When I was painting the sides, I realized that it actually is a little bit cleaner and faster if I just dab the paint everywhere and then use the paintbrush to spread it around. So that's what I did for the second coat. So now with the standard canvas, we're gonna need to mark out where each of the pixels are going to go. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas. However, Minecraft blocks are 16 by 16 pixels. And that's totally fine because 16 is divisible by half all the way down. So all you're gonna wanna do is take a ruler, figure out where the center point of each canvas is, and then divide those halves in half. So instead of being six inches for each section, you now draw a little line every three inches. So now you have four sections, and then we're gonna divide those four sections in half again. So every inch and a half, you're gonna put a line. Now we have eight sections. And then at that point, I didn't wanna deal with the random incremental inches, so I just eyeballed it and divided each section in half. And now I have 16 sections. Another very easy way to do this, if you have a 12 inch paper like I do, you can just take that, fold it in half, mark the center point, and then take that six inch paper, fold it in half, mark those halfway points, and then continue to fold down the paper until you get 16 markings, eight halfway points. I think it's easiest to do this with paper, but you could also do this with string. You're just looking for the halfway point and then the halfway point between halfway points and so on and so forth until you have 16 sections. At this point, I decided to tape my canvas, hoping that I would create a bunch of really crisp lines. However, looking at it in hindsight, you do not need tape. The paint still seeped under the lines and it just, it wasn't, it was way too convoluted. You do not need tape. I'll show you what I did with the wood painting. It makes much more sense and you don't need tape. Now let's talk about mixing paint colors. Here I swatched all of the browns and the greens so I could find the right colors that I wanted to work with. I have a fairly large Arteza acrylic paint set, which has tons of colors. And although this is nice, you do not need this. The bare minimum that you need is two greens, two browns, a black, and a white. You need a vivid green, an earth green, a saturated brown, and a desaturated brown. That's six colors. Using those six colors, you can mix any color that you need for this. So now we're gonna move on to the painting part. Again, don't bother with the tape. What I'm gonna recommend is just drawing out the grid. Connect all of your measurements so that you have a full grid and then just paint in the squares. Squares are relatively easy to paint. And then we're gonna turn this into a paint by numbers. In each of the squares, you're gonna write these letters and those letters will correspond to these colors of paints. If you want, you can just screenshot this one frame and this will basically give you all of the information that you need if you go and buy all of the supplies yourself. When I was doing this, I filled in all of the squares that I could, removed the top layer of tape, and then filled in all of those lines. Another problem with doing this weird tape method is that you have to constantly switch back and forth between colors. And when I was doing that, there was a point where I mixed in the wrong color of paint. So this dirt block is actually a little bit darker than it should be. I might try painting another one in the future, but for now I'm happy with how this came out. 
especially because it's done, and I can hang it in the office. And then when people are watching Joe Cat's stream, they can be like, hey, there's some dirt on your wall, and everyone will laugh. Ha 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 ha. So with the wood, I drew out the grid the way that I should have done with the dirt block, and then I wrote out numbers corresponding to each of the colors that I needed. I asked Joe what his favorite wood type in Minecraft was, and he said oak. So I decided to try and make this look as close to the oak colors as I could. Painting wood planks from Minecraft is a little bit more difficult because they each have a slightly different color variant. So if I mix my colors wrong, I could accidentally be painting spruce instead of oak. Overall, this was so much easier to paint than the dirt was. It's good, I like it, we're done. Also, if you want to paint a wood block instead of Minecraft dirt, here are the paint and number instructions for that. It's been a few days and I do feel a bit better, you know, overall. This is my dirt block. Again, it's a little bit darker than it's supposed to be, but it does clearly look like a Minecraft dirt block. Like if you showed this to a 13 year old, most likely they would know what it is. And then also we have oak is wood. Oh, I want to tell you about a cool thing because this video is sponsored by FlexiSpot and they make really cool standing desks. What is a standing desk, you may ask? It's basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a desk that you can adjust the height of. It goes up and down. So this is the FlexiSpot Komar All-in-One Standing Desk model EW8W. I hope Komar is how you say it. Either way, that's the model that I have. So just in case you've ever wondered about my desk setup, I actually have two desks. So the one that's sitting in front of me is the one that I use for overhead shots, and the one behind me is more of a set desk. This is more so so that I'm not just filming against a wall. And then I also have a desk in the other room that I use for my computer and for editing and streaming. And this is how I've filmed like for years, just like awkwardly sandwiched between two desks. But this one has made overhead shots so much easier because I can adjust the height of the desk. Setting it up was also extremely easy and uh, it holds quite a fair amount of weight. It lifted my boyfriend. So you can set four presets. I have number one and number four for the highest and lowest amounts, and then my two like medium preferred heights. I have quite a few times bumped into the buttons as I'm like getting up to wedge my way through these desks, but luckily there is a lock button. This desk also has a drawer and multiple charging ports, so you can charge your phone and not have to worry about like yanking it out of the wall. I use it to plug in my light because it's USB. Yeah. If you want to get a very nice standing desk, there will be a link in the description that you can click. And right now it goes to a $30 discount. So take advantage of that for as long as it lasts. Treat yourself, you deserve it. It can be very easy to have bad posture when you're sitting. So maybe consider getting a standing desk. If nothing else, being able to just adjust how high your desk is while you're sitting is much more comfortable than just having a desk that is stuck at a certain height. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to go back to normal desks after this. You've ruined me! I am going to give you 1000 off points for making it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much. I have nothing else for you. Go treat yourself to an adjustable desk. We're all working from home. Why not work from home more comfortably? Also, it might be better for your back in the long run. Oh, also patrons! Thank you patrons! I love you. I don't think anyone noticed, but I've kind of stepped away from YouTube just a little bit. My last upload was like three weeks ago. And what I have been doing in that time is mostly painting. That's a painting I did.